in God we trust. Go to the book of Hebrews chapter 11. Amen. I'm excited today. Hebrews chapter 11. I don't know if I was on somebody's radar. Hebrews chapter 11. Book of Hebrews. Thank you, Lord. Mm. You've got it. Say, I've got it. Mm. Now, faith is the confidence of what we hope for, an assurance of what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command, so that what is seen was made out of what was, what was visible or invisible. And by faith, Abel brought God a better offering than Cain did. And by faith, he was commended as righteous when God spoke well of his offering. And by faith, Abel still speaks. Say that with me. By faith, faith. Abel still speaks, even though he's dead. Mm. I'm going to talk about it today. Will you just bow your heads? Father, have your way. Hmm. Sit in the house, Lord. Have your way, God. Do what you want to do. Speak to every heart. Remove every distraction, every hindrance. God, every thought that would divert from hearing your voice. Lord, we give you praise for what you're going to do in this moment. God, we thank you for your word. The grass wither and the flower fade, but the Word of God shall abide forever. We thank you, Lord, that we can stand on your Word. You're not just a promise giver. You're a promise keeper today. And God, we ask that you would do what only you can do in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said, amen. amen. Come on, just high-five your neighbor. Come on, just tell them you look good this morning. In God, we trust. In God, we trust. Um, we're doing a whole series. Last week, I talked about how we got to learn how to trust God over mammon. And this week, I'm going to be continuing that series and, and discussing what it looks like for us to trust God. And, and um, how many know wisdom is trusting when you don't understand? That's really what it is. What wisdom is, if you, if you understood it, you wouldn't need wisdom. But is trusting God when you don't understand. And we understand that as parents because we tell our kids to do stuff that they don't understand. I'm the only one that deals with that. Anybody have to try to educate your children that you don't have to know everything, you just have to do what I tell you to do? That I know more than you do? I've been down the road farther than you have? I've experienced life a little bit longer than you? And I can, if you just trust me, I'll keep you from some trouble. You don't got to go through hell. You can bypass it if you just listen, listen. But you always got one. Okay, somebody said two. I was trying to be nice. (laughs) You always got one in the family. I don't know who it is, but they are hard-headed. They have just chosen to do it on their own. And they experience so much pain and so much frustration and so much ailment. And, and they experience a pleasure for a moment, but it doesn't last. And then they come and they start crying to you. And you want to you wanna be empathetic, but you have to talk to them and tell them, if you just do, if you just do what I said. How many, know, how many know your kids hate it when you start giving them a lecture after the lesson? They learn the lesson, but now they're getting a lecture. If you would have just listened to me. My, one of my, my sons the other day, he was getting so frustrated. He said, Dad, I don't want to lecture. I said, well, then you better learn the lesson. Mm-hmm. I, I, I'm really good at repeating the lesson when you don't listen. Mm. God is really good at repeating the lecture when we don't listen. And in this story... We need to recognize what it looks like to be walked by faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. Isn't it amazing that we walk by faith and not by fear? We walk by faith and not by our feelings. We walk by faith and not by sight because sight 
It's usually how we are led. We're based upon how we see. It's our flesh. It's how we feel. It's how we sense things in, the, in our understanding, how we see things. And God wants us to know that we can't live by the arm of our flesh. When I say the arm of our flesh, our own natural understanding. Because God's ways are higher than ours. God doesn't make sense to us in the natural. How in the world am I going to bring two fish and five loaves and you're going to feed the multitude? But I, I want you to recognize anything you put in his hands, <laughs> he has the power to do. He's just looking for somebody in the room that will just trust him with what he says. If you do what he says, you can get what he has. You can have his promises, but his promises are conditional on what he says. Don't do what you see. Do what he says. Ah, do what he says. And it's hard for us because sometimes we are led by our own sight and not by God's word. And in this story, I love it, the Bible talks about faith and how faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of, of things not seen. It's by faith. And he begins to bring, bring the roll call of witnesses, and he starts with Abel. Abel hasn't seen a miracle. Abel didn't split the Red Sea. Abel didn't raise the dead. Abel didn't turn water into wine. Abel didn't see all the deliverance that Moses saw. Abel didn't see all the miracles that Elijah did. He didn't call fire down from heaven. But he is the first witness because he was a man of obedience. By faith, Abel offered up a better sacrifice. By faith, Abel was a man that offered a sacrifice, and his blood still speaks. His blood still speaks, and, and it's important that we recognize that when we talk about Abel, how Abel and Cain are the juxtapositions of those who walk by faith and those who walk by the flesh. Y'all following me? I want you to go to the book of Genesis chapter 4. We're going to bring out the first family. Genesis chapter 4. I feel my teaching anointing on today. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 4, verse 1. The Bible tells us, and Adam made love to his wife. That's what it says. Amen. How many know you can't have babies until you make love to your wife? <laughs> Adam made love to his wife, Eve, and she became pregnant and gave birth to Cain. She said, with the help of the Lord, I have brought forth a man. Later, she gave birth to his brother, Abel. Now, Abel kept flocks, and Cain worked the soil. In the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord, and Abel also brought an offering. Fat portions, is what it says? It says, fat, Abel brought fat portions for some of the firstborn of his flocks. The Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering, but on Cain and his offering, he did not look with favor. So Cain was very angry and was very downcast. Then the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at the door. It desires to have you, but you must rule over it. Now Cain said to his brother, let's go out in the field. While they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. This is the narrative by which we see Hebrews chapter 11. And in this story, what we see here is that, that the story of how Cain and Abel offered an offering. You need to know this, and I need you to write this down. God is not a respecter of persons, but he is a respecter of principles. That the blessing that's on your brother, the blessing that's on your sister, the blessing that's on this person that you see, how many know God is not a respecter of persons? He's not trying to pick favorites. He's not trying to pick favorites. God favors those who follow him. And so if you want to see God's favor on your life and through your life, I need you to see that the number one thing that you need to learn is your heart over your hustle. Your heart over your hustle. How many know in, in our own Western society, we're all about the grind. We're all about getting the bag. And if you look at the text, the, that the Bible tells us that Abel gave up an offering. He was a steward of the, of the land. He was a steward of what God give it, given him and the animals. And, and he followed after Adam. The Bible tells us in Genesis chapter 2 that God commanded Adam to have dominion over the earth and to oversee all of creation, including the animals. And we see that Abel followed the call of Adam to follow after God and his commands for his life. But the Bible tells us that Cain went a different direction. 
Cain actually worked the ground that God had cursed. That the first thing that God cursed besides, uh, besides when he cursed man, he said that by the sweat of your brow, you will work the ground and the ground will be cursed. It'll be a reminder that the labor that you have is a reminder of, of what you did. It's the part of the consequence of the fall. And all of a sudden we see that Cain began to work the field and he got value in his work more than who he was in his worth towards God. And if you're not careful, you'll, you'll put more focus on your grind than on God. Y'all not going to talk to me today. You'll be fo more fo focused on your work. And I'm not against work ethic. I'm not against you working hard. I believe in working hard. But I also recognize that, I, that it's the grace of God all my life. And I'm stewarding it. I'm stewarding my time and my energy. But I need to recognize that everything comes from him and through him. And when I begin to take ownership and look at my gifts and my talents and my abilities and look what I have created and look what I have done and I'm a self-made man, I'm a self-made woman and I start putting more faith in my ability more than God's, I got my heart in the wrong place. And you know, a lot of people are working their own field instead of following God. And it's dangerous because when your heart becomes your hustle, your hustle becomes your heart. And I understand that. I've seen that. I've seen people who've made decisions based on their hustle than following God. My grandfather, my grandfather, he, when he came out of the war, he got married and he had kids. And, and my, my mom is one of seven. And, and one of the things that as they begin to grow the family, how many know you've got to have a good job? How many people want a good job? Now I'm going to pray for broken arms today. <laughs> Y'all liars in Jesus' name. Y'all raise them hands. How many like good jobs? Good paying job. How many like benefits? Oh, I like benefits. I like, I like, I like vacation paid. Amen? Anybody like that? Anybody, anybody like a, 40K, a 401k or a 403b? Amen? How many like bonuses? Just Come on, we just get the Lord moving in this house. Amen. I, mean, I like it all. I'm not against it. But my grandfather, when he began to come out of, of the war and he settled his family, and he, he came uh, in a crossroads because he was working for his uncle and he, the uncle wasn't paying him or the, the family member wasn't paying him as much as he needed because he had a growing family and he didn't know where to go. And all of a sudden, a new plant had, had, had been, began to develop right there in his hometown. General Electric could have came and people were getting great jobs and General Electric was providing all type of benefits and all types of great pay and all of the things and he was looking forward to it and all of a sudden as he went through the process of interviewing, uh, he was getting ready to get hired, they told him, he said, well, the only thing that you're going to have to have is you're going to have to work um, uh, shift work, which means you're going to have to miss Sunday mornings. You may have to miss church. My grandfather came home and, and him and my grandmother who are Dear saints of God, they are still saints of God, even though they've gone on to be with the Lord. They had to make a decision whether they were going to follow the money or they were going to follow God. Because my grandparents had made a decision that they were going to honor the Lord and they were going to make sure they raised their kids in the house of the Lord. They're going to raise them up in the admonition of the Lord so they would not depart thereof. I'm waiting for all the amens to go down. And they were going to make more focus on their heart than their hustle. And, and they had to make a big decision because uh, the, the company was asking them if they could go ahead and follow that path. And so my grandfather turned down the benefits. He turned down the job. He turned down everything. And he said, I'll just start my own company, Napa Auto Parts. And, and I'll start and do that. And I'll follow that way. So I make sure that my kids are in the house of the Lord. I'm going to make sure my kids are there on Sunday morning. And, and that time, it was Sunday night. And any time the house of the Lord was open, they were going to be in there. They were going to help make sure that the house of God was going to grow and reach the community. They had just made a decision. And can I tell you today, because of that choice, that God honored that choice. And because of their heart to say, God, we'll serve you. God blessed that business. God elevated that business. God grew that business. That business began to flourish, and I am a byproduct of their decision that their choice changed the trajectory of their entire family. I wouldn't be here today if my grandfather and grandmother didn't make a choice. Can I tell you, you can have the blessing, but make sure you follow the one that is the blesser. But you got to recognize what this story is, is that, that Cain is saying, I'm going to do it my way. I want God to bless my way. God does not bless your way. God blesses his way. God ain't going to bless your mess. God ain't going to put his hand on what he said he wouldn't do. He's only going to bless what he says. Here's the story that we see in this, in this 
in this chapter, we see this how that, that Cain, he follows the ground, he follows the path of his, own, of his own abilities, of his own strength. And the Bible says that when he comes to bring the offering to the Lord, the Lord does not bless it. The Bible tells us that Abel brought a better offering. Anybody ever asked the question, how did Abel get the blessing and Cain, the blessing that was withheld? Well, I want you to understand, if God gave it by faith, that means he gave instruction. Which means that God gave a word, and that word had a requirement of obedience. And how many of God is looking for sacrifice over scraps? God, God will honor his word. And God wants us to understand that by faith, Abel offered a better sacrifice. means that his offering was faith-filled. First, he gave him what God required. Do you know that God actually has a requirement of what we give? God is not willy-nilly about it. <laughs> you understand that this is the first mention of offering even before the tithe. How many know God was always calling us to be a people of sacrifice? We were always called to give. Abraham tithed unto the Lord. In fact, tithing is not giving. Tithing is returning. We recognize that. We recognize that, that by faith, Abel said, I will do what you said. If you do what he says, God will rain his favor on you. Not only did he give him what he says, but he gave him a faith-filled offering by giving him the first. How many want to give God first? That is a sign that he is priority and preeminent over everything. In fact, God is so serious about it that, that, that he, we need to understand today that God's favor follows those who trust God. And here's the question I've got to ask you. Are you favoring or are you laboring? <laughs> Just ask your neighbor, say, are you favoring or are you laboring? Mm -hmm. <laughs> because when you walk by the flesh... Labor follows you, but when you walk by the Spirit, favor follows you. See, when you recognize that when you obey God, you don't have to look for favor. Favor starts looking for you. Favor starts saying, where is Paul strong? I need to find. I, the, you don't look for the blessing. The blessing starts looking for you. You don't have to worry about what God can do. God can do more in a life in one minute than you could do in a lifetime. Let me write, you write this down. Write this down. One minute of favor is greater than a lifetime of labor. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. That is, yeah I, know, I know you're gifted, I know you got, you got a, 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 a MBA, I know you got a PhD, I know you got your business going on, and you're looking at the stock market, and you're looking at the S&P 500, and you're looking at the commodities, and you're looking at what the, what the, what the bell curve is, and, and what the trends are, and what the job market is declaring, and you're worried about this worker, and you're worried about that worker, or you're maybe working on the job, and you don't know if, you're, if your job is going to last, or if the boss is going to like you, or the boss is going to be, yeah, be gracious to you and you're worried about that because you're working in labor. But I don't want to work in labor. I don't want to worry about what my boss thinks or, or what my friends think or, or what my family's doing or what my family's not doing. I don't want to worry about the economy, whether it's going up or whether it's going down. I don't want to worry about the situation. I want to make sure that my hands are off of it so his hands are on it and I want favor because God, when he puts your favor, you ain't got to worry about nothing. You can go to bed at peace knowing that God God is watching over your life. He's watching over your children. He's watching over your finances. He's watching. If the boss don't like it, that's okay. Favor follows me. Come on, give the Lord a praise today. Anybody want favor on your life? Anybody want favor on your marriage? Anybody want favor on your children? Anybody want favor on your workplace? God will elevate you in spite of your enemies. Ah, I don't want labor. I want favor. I don't want to have to worry. I don't want to have to fear. 
I don't want to be stressed out. Uh, there have been times when I put my hands on the plow and I've been working and, and God has told me, Bill, listen, he said, my yoke is easy and my bur burden is light. Uh, I got to learn how to turn it over to the Lord. Lord, you started it uh, and you're a God that can finish it. You're a God that can sustain it in the middle of where I am. I can see you working even when I don't understand. I can see you doing things uh, behind the scenes uh, because you're a God who works in my life when I trust you. I trust in the Lord with all my heart and lean not to my own understanding. In all my ways, I in every situation, I put you first. I want favor on my life. Woo. Come on, just high five somebody. Say, you're sitting by somebody with favor. Mm -hmm. You don't even know who you're sitting next to, but you're sitting somebody next to somebody who's a child of the king. <laughs> who does, if, if, if you need to understand, my God is a God who has a cattle on a thousand hills and all the silver. I trust him with my life. I trust him with everything that I got. <sighs> and the finances in my finances, I breed generosity. It's a sign. I want his favor. Which leads to the way of Cain. Cain is laboring in his own strength. And he's mad at God. Some of us are mad at God because God won't do what we ask him to do. But you're not following his way. God's not going to change his opinion on his word. In fact, you're not going to break the word. The word's going to break you. Let me just tell somebody today. You ain't got to worry. God's word is eternal. It's everlasting. It's truth. And it will challenge us to change us today. And in the area of our finances, when we get this in our spirit today, then, then everything becomes an overflow. If God can't trust you with money, what's he going to trust you with? So he calls it the filthy lucre of the Bible. If he, he can't trust you with earthly riches, how can he trust you with, with kingdom riches? It's the heart. That's why we put him first in our finances and put him first in worship towards God in our giving. Because here's the third thing, we want the blessing over the curse. Do you understand that the blessing is progenitive? What I mean by that is, is that it goes through you to your children's children's children. Do you know that there's some things that God's doing for me that ain't even because of me, it's because of my grandparents? <laughs> my grandparents laid of such a foundation that even if I jack it up, I'm getting some blessings and dividends just because uh, they were solid as a rock. Blessing. <laughs> I want the blessing. Look, at, look in Genesis chapter 4. I'm getting ready to pray for our kids in just a minute. If you're in the room and you're a child, say, I'm here. I hear you, baby. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then look at this. Look at, first, I want you to, first, here's the thing. We recognize Abel died. People would say, but Pastor, how could he be blessed if he got murdered? Here's the problem. It's not how long you live. It's how well you live. It's not how long you live. It's how well you live. And there are some people that are the wrong example, and they're being told about through time and eternity. The way of Cain, the way of Cain is the way of the curse. In, in Genesis actually 4, it talks about Cain and how Cain walked away from the presence of God. The way of Cain is the way that I'm walking away from God and his presence, and I'm going to do it my way. It's the spirit of unbelief. It says, I don't care what you say, God, I'm going to do it anyways. In fact, do you understand that hearing and obeying is synonymous in the Hebrew? That you have not heard if you have not obeyed. Woo, did you hear what I just said? That's why when the Bible says, hear the word of the Lord, he was saying, obey the word of the Lord. Because a lot of us say that we are hearing God, but we're not obeying God. And you cannot hear God unless you obey. Woo. But he heard the Lord, but he didn't obey the Lord. He said, I'm going to do it my way. And the Bible talks about the way of Cain. It's the way of unbelief. It's the way of, of self-centeredness. And in Jude chapter, Jude chapter 1, there's only one verse in uh, one chapter in, in, in Jude. 
It says, woe to them, they have taken the way of Cain. They have rushed for profit for Balaam's heir. They have been destroyed in Korah's rebellion. These people are blemishes at your love feast, eating with you without the slight qualm. Shepherds who feed only on themselves. They are clouds, watch this. They are clouds without rain. Blown along by the wind, autumn trees without fruit, and uprooted twice. The way of Cain is they are clouds without rain and trees without fruit. They have image but no substance. They have a form of godliness but deny the power thereof. They are Christian atheists. They say God, they say they love God with their lips, but they deny him with their hearts. And y'all gonna get quiet on me today. And I'm trying to tell you that's the way of Cain, and I don't want to, be, to follow the way of Cain. I want the blessing on me. I want the blessing on my children's children's children. We say, well, Abel died, but you don't understand. Seth was his substitute. Even though Abel died, Seth was his substitute. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 4, verse 25, Adam made love to his wife again, and she gave birth to a son and named him Seth. Seth means grace, so the Lord has granted me another child. And since Cain killed him, so Seth, the Bible says, Seth also had a son, and he named him Enosh. And at that time, people began to call on the name of the Lord. <laughs> that is, that Seth started a progeneration of those who would become worshipers, people that would walk by faith. That's where we get Abraham. That's where we get Isaac. That's where we get Jacob. That's where we get Joseph. That's where we get David. That's where we get the, the, the prophets of God. That's where we come down to the lineage of Jesus who would crush the, the serpent head we recognize that the progeneration of blessing wants to be on us and, and cannot tell you today I don't want to just have the blessing I want to carry the blessing come on give God a praise today if you will and I hear you because you may not have had a praying grandmother. You may not have had a praying grandfather. Your dad may have not been the one that was the great father and he, and he had a curse. But can I tell you that that may have ran through your family until it ran into you. I know it ran into your family, but when it ran into you, it's when it stopped. That curse is broken. It may have been in your dad. It may have been in your mom. It may have been in your grandparents. But when it ran into you, it stopped. It may have ran in your family, but when it ran into you, the blessing stopped it. Come on, give God praise today. Come on, give him praise today. Yes. It starts today. It starts with this next generation. It starts now. I want, listen, my great grandkids are going to be blessed just because I'm carrying the blessing on my life. My kids are going to be blessed. My family's going to be blessed. My house is going to be blessed. I'm only blessed in my coming and blessed in my, I'm only blessed in the city and blessed in the field. I'm only, everything I do is going to be blessed, not because of who I am, but because of whose I am. Come on, give God a praise today. Hallelujah. Come on, give him a praise today. I want blessing over curse. I don't want to walk the way of Cain. I'm talking to people today. You say, Pastor, I'm doing it my way. Well, let me tell you something. It's going to be labor. It's going to be pain. Oh, yeah, you're going to have momentary pleasure, but it's going to be long-term regret. And most importantly, if you don't follow the way of Cain and you walk in unbelief, you will spend not just your life in misery, but you'll spend your life in eternity without God in the devil's hell. And God wants us to know today. That's why he said, I said before you, life or death, blessing or cursing. Stand with me today. That's what God's saying to us. We, pro we proclaim the blessing of God upon our kids. Let me just tell you, I can pray a blessing, but let me tell you, if you don't have it on your family, it ain't going to work. Hello? Oh, I want to pray God's mercy, and God's mercy is so good. How many know God gives us some things that we don't even deserve? Oh, mercy's there, but I don't want this mercy working for me. I need, I need blessing. Mercy runs, judgment walks. There's some of y'all walking in mercy, and you need to pray because judgment's coming down, to, down, down your path. Well, Pastor, that sounds pretty harsh. Well, the Bible tells us God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, that shall he reap. I want this church blessed. I want your family blessed. I want your marriage blessed. 
But you can either follow the way of Abel or you can follow the way of Cain. Abel is actually a type of Christ because the blood still speaks. How many know the blood still speaks? I'm not talking about Abel. I'm talking about Christ. The blood still speaks. Woo. It reminds me of who God is. I got, it, I got the blood on the doorpost over my family. The blood still speaks. The blood of Christ still works. It's my protective arm. It's my strong tower. It's my refuge. It's my righteousness. It's my help. It's my strength. Every head bowed, every eye closed. No one looking around. Lord, I just pray, God, today the blessing would be rich and had no sorrow to it. Father, I pray over this house today, God. Lord, we want to follow. We want to walk by faith and not by sight. God, we, don't, we want to be able, a, a life well lived, a life that still speaks, a life that declares the goodness of God. And Father, I pray in the name of Jesus right now for every family in this house today, every, every adult, every young person, every youth, every child, that if they don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, that they would surrender their lives right now to him. If every head bowed, every eye closed, no one around. Kids, I want you to be quiet for me today. God's speaking. Right now, I want you to listen to me. You say, Pastor, today I don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, and I want to have a relationship with God. I'm not in the right place. I, I'm not talking about religion. Listen, religion doesn't make you a Christian. Going to church doesn't make you a Christian, just like going to McDonald's doesn't make you a Big Mac. Come on. You say, Pastor, today I need Jesus. I'm walking the way of Cain, and I need God. I'm tired of laboring. I'm tired of fighting. I'm tired of frustration. I'm tired of walking in my flesh. I need God. I need him to redeem me. I need him to save me. Come on, just raise your hand right there. Come on, come on, raise it up. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to pray this prayer with me. Everyone pray this prayer. Say, Jesus, today, I believe you're the Son of God, and you have the power to change my life. I ask you right now to forgive me of all my sins. I've sinned against you, I've sinned against myself, and I've sinned against others. And today I confess my sin, and I turn from my sin, and I confess you as my Savior, and I make you my Lord. And from this day forward, I choose to follow you. I thank you today, God, for your redeeming power, for your saving power. And today, I give you my life, I give you my heart, in the mighty name of Jesus. And all God's people said, come on, give God a praise. Come on, give him a praise. Come on, give him a praise right there. We serve an awesome God.